days are long and the years are short. Time reveals strengths and challenges we could never foresee. I can't believe it's almost five and a half years that he's been in office. We've been through a lot. The world is, is in a tricky place. First Lady Marty Kemp often says the governor's office wasn't in the marriage vows. She says she could have never imagined what they'd face. I had no idea, which is probably a good thing, a really good thing. You were saying it was probably better not to know all that would be ahead right. in those campaign days. Oh, exactly. It's refreshing to get back here. It's just home. Fall 2018 on the Kemp family farm in Athens. You know, I'll need to get on that tractor right now and cut that pasture right there. It was the final stretch of a close campaign filled with contention and controversy. The polarizing climate we're in now. What was considered polarized and intense then seems pretty tame to the tone and division of politics now. And it prepared us for what was lying ahead, which has, um, you know, been challenging, rewarding, but fun, hard, tears, laughs, memories, you know, all the above. I wouldn't trade it for anything. If you had known there was a pandemic in the future? Wow, that's a great question. Um, we would have still fought hard, continue to fight harder, you know, because you fought hard for all those people that you met along the way. Almost 14 months to the day after being sworn in as Georgia's 83rd governor, the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic. We didn't have time to really think about it because it was just all so shocking and, you know, how in the world can we be in this position. Got it done. And there was a deep clash about the governor's timing of reopening Georgia. I did open a lot of mail along the way during that time. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, people were not as patient as they should have been, but that's okay if they wanted to vent their anger. But I don't know if I'd put a lot of that stuff on paper, but that's okay. I mean, you're not always gonna make everybody happy and they're angry and, and I understand that, but we do listen. Criticism is part of the profession of politics. It has come sharply surrounding everything from the pandemic to Georgia's role in the 2020 election. And personal jabs are expected from lawmakers to constituents, but not necessarily from a president in one's own party. And I wasn't happy with Brian Kemp. He's been a complete and total disaster on election integrity. Brian Kemp, he sold you out. The First Lady says all of it's challenging. Situations that we would have never imagined that you would be put in and how you would handle those. And I'm proud of him for what he has done, for his patience. I don't think he has that much patience for me, but he does for the state, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it all takes her back to something she told me those years ago outside the family's home. You know, all I ask is that we respect each other and, and not be ugly take the high road and move forward and that's all you can do. I remember saying, you know, I just hope that we can all learn to be respectful. At the end of the day, agree to disagree. And that really stands to really speak loudly now. I didn't really realize that what I was saying then, how much that was really going to be a part of this administration. And, you know, people that attack the ones you love, it, it, that is very, because of course I know him, better than anybody and that I, you know I'm just like that is, you're just wrong you're wrong to say that I mean if he doesn't do what you want him to do I understand you can agree to disagree but don't be just downright mean about it. Mrs. Kemp says the key to every valley and peak is sticking together from private moments inside the governor's mansion to countless shared press events and podiums. We see the whole family unit so often together. I know people ask me about that. They're like, you're always beside him. And I'm like, why would I miss an opportunity to be able to serve the state as well? She says she chooses to focus on her work, issues ranging from animals. You know, adopting out 120 dogs and seven cats and a hamster. To the fight against human trafficking. I'm really proud of that. We've got a lot more work to do, but I, I feel like it's making a difference. I mean, it's chiseling away. Um, I would love to rid it of Georgia forever, but you know, we'll continue to work on that in the next two and a half years. We see you at so many events and press conferences, but what people don't see is you are in policy meetings. What made you want to be involved at that level? You know, I'm very interested. I mean, my dad was in politics. I wish I'd paid attention more then. And he was a Democrat, passed away as a Republican. 
but you know, I just like to see how it all works. There is a lot of cynicism from where you're sitting. Do you also feel there's a lot of hope that, you know, politics can work yes. and policy can work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen it. I mean, you know, I know that these things can work. When you sit here now and you think back to yourself five years ago, oh, wow. what would you tell her? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, buckle your chin strap. It's going to be it's going to be quite a ride. <laughs> no, to just enjoy, enjoy, and, and listen. Don't talk so much. Listen to what people are saying, because you learn more from listening than you do from talking. You may miss something. Right now, there's no shortage of speculation in political circles about a run for higher office someday. How much of your space is thinking about the now versus thinking about the what's next? I don't think about what's next. You know, God's in control. I learned that early on. For now, she says they're focused on the time they have left as first lady and governor. If he has something else in store for us ahead, then we'll just listen to him. And because if he's going to bring you to it, he's going to get you through it. I know that for a fact.